Now, what are we going to do today? First of all, let me tell you what we're not going to do. We're not going to act out skits, okay? This is not training you to be funny. We're trying to draw parallels between improv techniques and successful interviews. So this is about strategies. It's not about t trying to tell you jokes. Right, so what, if, what about these interview strategies? They're going to fall into three categories. Before the interview, during the interview, and after the interview. So before the interview, what are the kinds of things that you can do? We're going to try to give you some strategies on controlling what you can control, and hopefully being able to just accept the things that you can't. During the interview, we're going to stress three really super important things. These are really the take-home points of the entire workshop. You need to breathe, you need to listen, and you need to build relationships. That's what the interview is all about for you. That's how you're going to be successful. And then we'll touch up after the interview, what do you do after? What's your exit strategy? What you need to do is find your way of showing confidence and gratitude for what just transpired. That's our outline. That's what we're going to do. We're going to turn it over uh, to Stacy to talk about why improv. All right, so when you guys decided to come to the workshop today, you knew that it was about improvisational comedy. What does improvisational comedy, comedy mean to you? I want to hear from you guys. This is a really interactive thing. So even though we're not going to be funny, we want to hear from you. So what is improvisational comedy to you folks? Just throw it out there. I'm going to keep a list. Yes. Yeah. Being funny on the fly. Being funny on the fly. Right, right, right. Okay. Anybody else? Has anybody ever, ever had an opportunity to do improv? No? Great. This is a totally new crowd. This great. is fabulous. This is great. So, for the textbook definition, the form of theater, often comedy, sometimes very much not comedy, um, in which most or all of what's performed, you can read. I'll let you read that. Is unscripted, is an important part, spontaneously by the performers. And it's about, in the purest form, the dialogue, action, story, and characters are created collaboratively by the players as the improvisation unfolds at present time. Just like an interview, these things are unfolding on present time, and you, have, you don't have a script to work with. So how do you deal with factors? And that's what we're going to talk a lot about today. So when I was in college, and I would say, I have to go to improv rehearsal, seems rather counterintuitive, right? Why? Why do we rehearse? Why do actors rehearse improvisational comedy? We re re reinforce the rules of improvisation and implement them. So we're going to give you a few of the rules. There's a lot of rules with improv. But these are some very important ones. Anticipate what your partners may say because you're working in a group. So this is about the group dynamic. That's one thing that you, you as an interviewer may not get the opportunity to work with. Trust yourself. Learn to depend on your own ability and judgment. Develop a story with your partner, and it really becomes a, a, a matter of listening to your partner and working together to tell the same story, even though you don't know what that story may be. And to learn the games or the forms. We're going to show you a couple of, uh, we're going to do one exercise today, one game today, that you all will have a chance to do as well, and it's about learning those forms. So that's kind of the purpose of improv, because people are just like, you can't rehearse improv, but as a matter of fact, you can. So. What factors can you control before an interview? That's the most important thing. So it's kind of, when you walk into an interview situation, days and weeks beforehand are as important to how you are going to respond in that situation as if you, as almost anything. So the first, you have to control and, and the concerns you have because if you can alleviate the nerves, alleviate or have some understanding of what the nerves are based in, you can alleviate those concerns and actually have them have them be something that are not taking away from nervousness for you. Stephen Covey, has anybody heard that name before? Has anybody heard of a book called The, the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People? It's the same person. And his basic concern is, is or his, or his basic idea with this, the circle of influence is, is to first identify what concerns you might have as an interviewer. When you're going into an interviewer, and Brad's gonna keep track of it, interview, Brad's gonna keep track of this. Tell me things you might be concerned about. Anybody? What makes you nervous? How about if you were to walk into an interview and maybe sometimes you're, you're 
a little unsure that this is the right position for you, if you're unsure of your skill set, would that be a good concern? What about you've heard things about this company as far as they're really off the wall. They have, they have some really off the wall concerns or cultural things that they do that are really exciting, but they may not work for everybody. Identifying those concerns is something you can do. Okay, now I've given you a couple ideas. What else might be concerning? Yeah. Sometimes there's just not the best energy between you and the other person, so the actual interviewer can make or break an interview for you. Absolutely, absolutely. And it's about learning to work with that. That's great, yeah, that's exactly. Okay, anybody else? What other concerns do you have? What makes you nervous when you go to interviews? And it's big and little. What about the way you dress? Maybe that's not some, maybe that's not a control that you have, or and not something that you know about the culture, anything like that, so you identify those concerns. Whatever they are. Um, maybe, uh, I don't know, so that's, that's enough. What, any, anybody else have concerns? Yeah. What if they say something that you don't know, can't anticipate? That's great. That's absolutely great. Okay, so go ahead if you would, Rad. So if you're thinking about this, and we have some left-brainers and some right-brainers in here, but something that helps a left-brain person sometimes to check things off the list. So if you literally sit down two days before the interview, all the things that are making you nervous, put those in there. Put them inside of the circle of concern. This is identifying them and pointing them out. Understand that this is what they are. And then you build on that. So then you have the idea. So Brad, can you read some of those things that... Yeah, well, we have the energy level between the participants. What if you just don't seem to be getting along with the person who's interviewing you? I also had, what if you ask you questions you don't anticipate? I would also include things that are per more personal, like, so I've heard that I'm supposed to have a firm handshake. What if I squeeze too hard? Or, I know that I'm supposed to make eye contact, but what if it looks like I'm just staring blindly? It, it, there are things that you're probably going to be worried about as you go into an interview. Put them in the, can I control this category? Yeah, these are the biggest things, that, these are big and small, they, they, they can affect you equally in an interview situation. So then you start to identify, what are the things that I can influence? What are the things that I, by learning about the company, by learning about the mission of the company, by learning about the culture of the company, by going to lunch with somebody that works at the company and is able to answer a lot of questions for you. See what, do the research, 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 research on the company. And as you take those concerns, you see that these are the things that you can influence. These are the things that you'll have control of. So maybe in, in that situation with the, you're not sure about the questions, Really think about the job description that you're applying for and look into the company's, company's past and, and work and see if, I, if that's something that you under, you can understand a little bit more clearly and it will help you kind of, it, it, it becomes, you are influencing it. So now you put these things that are in your concern. And if you want to check it off of the list, check, check, check. Moving it over to influence. These are the things you can influence. So then you have all these things in your circle of influence that you can absolutely take action to and proactively manage these concerns. And then, so you have these things in circle of influence, so then you go to the next one. Okay. Sorry, bad. <laughs> Anything else, Fred? No. Okay, so you have your influence. So then you've taken these, you've identified the things that you can influence, you've done the research, you've done the work, and all of a sudden the things that were making you nervous in the interview situation are all things that you now have control of. And that control is empowerment of you as an interviewer. So this is the work that you do beforehand. And these are the same things that improv artists do as well. They're thinking about the things that my partner is never going to be able to pick up on that. That's not quick. So then it's a matter of, so my partner maybe, my partner's trying to do something where they're trying to set the scene and it's the wrong scene and it's not what I want. And, and all of a sudden you realize that these are your concerns. Maybe it's not something that you have within your influence, but you, the understanding, you, have, you listen to your partner and, and you think about some of the things that we'll talk about later as far as rules, and those are things that you can control and so are not able to make you nervous or make you not be able to think clearly when you're doing your presentation. So that's kind of the Stephen, Cir Stephen Covey circle of influence. So it's just a matter of quickly, not quickly, but in-depth looking at the things that are making you nervous 
and the things that are a problem for you potentially in an interview, identifying them and proactively dealing with them and letting them migrate from something that you're concerned about to something that you can control. Okay, so now let's kind of segue into what do I do in the interview? It's all about being prepared. And so being prepared means being relaxed. You've interviewed for something. You probably had to interview for the internship you have right now. Am I right? So how did you feel? Give me some words that describe how you felt when you went into that interview. How did you feel? Yes, please. Nervous. Nervous? Anything else? Probably you all felt nervous. Stressed, anxious, excited enthusiastic. I'm just throwing some words out there that might describe how you felt. All of those are going to elevate your adrenaline levels. There's the biologist in me talking. And all of them are going to make you talk faster and try to say as many things as you possibly can because you're afraid of the silence. Silence is bad, right? No. Silence is good. Silence is fine. But silence only comes when you stop and take a breath. So there are a variety of relaxation techniques and breathing techniques. They're easily Googleable. I'm not going to spend our time here since we have so little of it to go through breathing techniques. Find one that works for you and practice it. Because the most important thing that you can do is try to remain calm. If everybody, that, everybody else that interviews for the position is a mess, they're a basket case because they're so nervous, and you're the one who comes out of it calm, you're the one they're going to remember. So I'm not saying it's easy, and I'm not saying you're going to be good at it right away, but if you practice those breathing techniques, practice the relaxation techniques, eventually you start to get to the point where you speak to the period, where there's an end to your sentence. You've finished your thought, and it's clear that you're not just rambling. Interviewers hate rambling. They want you to say what you feel in as many words as you need, no more, no less, and again, this is the kind of thing that comes with practice. But in the end, it has to end with a period. You speak to the end of the sentence. So what I want you to do for just a couple of minutes, because we don't have a lot of time, practice this. Find somebody next to you, preferably somebody that you don't know, but I know that a lot of you work to very closely together, and just practice an introduction. This is who I am, and this is something interesting about me. And what I want you to do is to try to Think about your sentences. Make sure that every sentence has a beginning, a middle, and an end. And you end it with the period, always with the period. More words are not necessarily better, but the correct word is very powerful. It's always good to use the appropriate word in the situation. Doesn't mean you have to talk like a walking thesaurus, but using the right word at the right time can be advantageous. And end every sentence with a period. In the end, what our goal is, is for you to strike um from your vocabulary. You need to get rid of the ums and the uhs and the so. And don't let every sentence start with so or now. Those are very tempting. They're crutches. We're going to try to wean you away from those crutches. So just take a couple of minutes, no more than two minutes, and just practice that. Practice using some sentences that end in periods and have a point. So to give you a more specific assignment, what I want you to do is find that person and I want you to tell them one thing that's interesting, my name is, where you're from, and one thing that's very interesting about you. Okay? Simple assignment. <laughs> okay, everybody turn to a pocket. Turn to your right of this. We're going to go around. So we want to hear what you're saying, too. All right.
end one sentence, and the way to start another sentence would be to start with a completely new idea. So thinking about that is really, it's helpful and it makes you seem more organized and more, and less nervous. So there are some rules of improv that you use. So one of the most important rules, what was the, um, yeah, no. So, so for an uh, improv artist, there's, you have to listen because you're being thrown all new information at all times. So you have to listen to the, listen thoughtfully to what the person's saying. And this is in front of a large audience, as an improv actor, of course. Hopefully a large audience, you're not always sure of that. Um, and it's about listening to the whole thought of your partner and to listen to it and to respond that. It's so easy to think of something like an idea in your head. That you're like, oh, I'm going to tell this joke about, remember we were going to tell that joke about listening? Yeah, you remember that? <laughs> so you think about it and then you're like, that's going to be so funny. And you get to the interview moment or you get to the, the performance moment and you're like, you're talking to the person, you're like, okay, I'm going to do the part about the listening, okay, ready? Right? <laughs> you know? And you, that's what's happening inside. And at the same time, you realize that you're just like, and then I said, you know, and it's completely jarring. It takes you out of the sentence. You're not responding to what's being said. So we are, as improv performers, or if you're an improv performer, you have to respond to exactly what's being said. So in an interview situation, it's the same situation. These people are going to be throwing you things, and they're going to be saying things, and there's things about yourself that you're going to want to promote and you're so excited about promoting that you stop listening and actively listening to what they're saying and responding, it can be easy to, I'm not saying you do, it can be easy to stop responding to the questions that they're asking because you're so excited about telling them about, about the things that are good about you that you stop listening to the questions that they're asking. And so it's, it's really important that you're an active listener in any given interview. Even though you're espousing the things about you, the most important thing is to listen to what the interviewer is asking, asking and responding to that specific. You may have heard this before, but if you're thinking about your answer, you're not listening. So listen to the question. Then, don't be afraid of the silence. If it takes you a moment to formulate your response to the question, that's a good thing. It suggests that you're thoughtful. It also prepares you. Now, you're going to go into an interview having already anticipated a lot of questions, some of which you'll be right about. Don't blurt out the answer to the question you knew was coming just because you already knew the answer. Because then you look like a deer in the headlights when they ask you one you didn't know. If every time they ask you a question, you pause and give it some thought, even if you're pretending that you're trying to think of an answer to a question you already knew they were going to ask, you buy yourself that flexibility when they throw you a curveball to have just given it the same amount of thought you appeared to give to everything else. Don't be afraid of that silence. All right. One of the biggest rules in improv is, is don't say no in a, in, a, in a scene. Always say yes. And then in addition to saying yes, it's yes and. If you say no in a situation, I walk up to Brad, Let's, is an improv performer, I walk up to Brad, and I say, hey, I had that tie four years ago and you have it now? Great, you've got that. Now what if he says, you know, if he says, um, what do you, what, what do you mind, can you negate it? No, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and see. <laughs> However, if I say, I had that tie four years ago, how did you get it? Did, uh, were you keeping it at home? Well, uh, yeah, but I, I actually got it at this thrift store in Nashville, Tennessee. Have you ever been to Nashville? Well, yes, and the conversation goes on. Just like in an interview, the conversation goes on, right? So, it's great to be here in the Alaskan Wilderness with you. It's so easy to say, no, we're not in the Alaskan Wilderness, we're in... <laughs> Enterprise works, you know, so it's, don't make it. And, when it. and by the same token, then, if, as an interviewer, you are going to hear things that are potentially surprising to you or something you don't know how to respond to. So instead of saying, uh, maybe they'll say, 
Well, you said that you had some experience with programming, um, programming this, this particular kind of language. Well, no. Wow, that stops the conversation, right? <laughs> but if you say, well, yes and no, I haven't had this opportunity to do a lot of study on this particular item, but I'm really excited because I found that, and now you're saying, and I found that I have a really strong aptitude for, take, for picking up programming languages. And so all of a sudden, instead of saying no, we're not going to be taught, I cannot do that, you said, well, yes, and then you've given yourself the opportunity to impart new information about yourself that you may not have otherwise had the opportunity to, to say. So that's a really great guidepost for interviews and for the improv person. Well, we're ready for the activity. Okay. <laughs> He's starting to make me look good. <laughs> no, it's really important that as an improv person, and we're going to do an exercise here that will hopefully demonstrate that a little bit. But as, and this is what you're rehearsing, when improv actors rehearse, they're rehearsing listening, responding, and saying yes and, but they're responding to how can I make this person look good? If I say, if he says, uh, no, boy, that makes me feel silly, right? So you have to work to make that person look good and to build that relationship as, because the relationships that are implied when you say yes and, and you're listening to what they're doing, you will grow a relationship with your with your partner, your scene partner, and then as an interviewee, you are building that same relationship. You are being easy to talk to, you are listening to what they're saying, you're engaged in what they're saying, and by doing these things, you're responding to what they're saying, and everybody looks good, and all of a sudden, the, the positivity of that, and the ability to communicate, and the relationships that you've built, are, are very helpful in making a great interview. And it also helps them understand your ideas, how your answers, it, it, it makes that building that relationship and building that, list, that listening and that information between yourselves, it makes you look good too, because they look good. Nobody feels self-conscious, nobody feels concerned about, well, this person has kind of a defensive mechanism that, they're, that I'm more worried about, things like that. So that, making the person look good and not negating them or, or saying, you know, offending, you know, don't ask questions and be like, well, yeah, I wish you wouldn't ask that question, but, you know, make them look good. I'm so glad you asked that question, right? So these are kind of some basic rules of human problem. So at this point, we're going to do a ga game, and you guys are also going to do this game in a minute. But this is one that is used in improv comedy, but the same, but these rules apply to this position, to, the, to this exercise. It's called complaint department. What the person, I'm going to be at, um, as the store clerk, and I'm going to be here, and Brad's going to leave the room, and we're going to give him an item to return. He won't know what that item is, so I have to guide him through by matter of listening to what he's saying and responding appropriately to guide him to the right idea. And we have to actively engage in that, and you have to, all those good things, all these guideposts that I've just given you, it kind of, it hopefully will bring this together for you. Because you're starting to see how you can make them look good and listen to each other. And yes and, I'm not going to say a lot of no's. I'll say a lot of yes ands. So, we'll try these and see if you can see how they apply. And then we'll talk a little bit about that and then you'll this yourself. Okay, so do I know what item I'm returning and you don't? Brad does not know the item that he is returning. Oh, I don't know. So you don't you're going you're gonna to yep. decide? And I am going to work with you guys to decide what that item will be. If you want to. I'll go with it. John, Jake, and Jingle Hire Schmidt. Round one. All right. So, can anybody think of an item that you might be bringing up? Let's look at something off the wall. Crunchy? Doesn't matter. Okay, good. I like it. All right. So, he's going to make some. He's going to bring this back, and I am going to try to guide him through this. Now, we're, I'm going to be sitting down, so if you guys need to stand up in the back, that's cool too. We're fascinating to watch. So, all right. All right. Next. Okay. 
Yeah, I'd like to return this item. It's not working out for me at all. Oh. Well, uh, I understand that. What What did you do with this that it doesn't work for you? I'm a little confused. Well, I tried, to, I tried to plug it into the wall. But... <laughs> Very strong choice of Well, that's what all the computer people tell you. They'll unplug it and plug it back in. <laughs> yes, and they are so right with most things. But if I were going to be bringing this item home, for instance, I probably wouldn't um, plug it into the wall. Actually, my four year old, he would love this, and I might just snag it and take it home to him. Huh? Maybe. He's a fiend for this. Should I try to microwave it first? Well, Yes, if you were having a hard time getting it out of the bottle, for sure. It's, a, it's it, I don't like it warm myself. I like it much cooler on a sandwich, you know, but <laughs> that's just me. Um, on a sandwich? You mean like a grilled cheese sandwich? Well, I have never had this with grilled cheese, but it would be something that you could do, that's true. So I should have been trying to drink it instead of plug it in the outlet? <laughs> The viscosity on that one is like the last in July or <laughs> January or whatever. Oh, yeah. so I, I should, shouldn't have tried to stretch it so much? <laughs> well, I wouldn't have stretched it in my first experience with it. I like it with a little jelly myself. Oh, I'd like to return this peanut butter, please. Excellent. I will take it back. <laughs> All right. So, very basic. Very basic. But what did we have? What did, what are the things that I had to listen to and respond to? Can you tell me? I mean, obviously we know what they were, but what were the things that you were the places you saw me actively listening? Any particular points or things that I could have even done better or differently? I'm almost perfect. Perfect. I'm almost perfect. That's true. Okay. So the things that I listened to about him, I had to understand that he plugged it into the wall. <laughs> now I see why you laughed at that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and you necessarily don't. Have, so all of these things that we had to say, we had to listen. I had the yes and. Did you hear the yes ands and how that moved the conversation along? And I tried to make it. I do my best. <laughs> all right. So now what I'd like you to do is I'd like for everybody to find a partner that they haven't worked with that's from a different company, something, find a seat. Be Put yourself up just a hair out of your comfort zone. Just a hair out of it. <laughs> We're not going to put anybody on stage. No worries. And when you're with your partners, go ahead and be quiet and get back up here.
you're ready for those interviews. It's also a fun game to play at parties. <laughs> All right, so did everybody, did anybody find an opportunity to, to, to use the techniques that we had talked about, about listening, responding? Was there a really great example that you thought, oh my goodness, that was exactly perfect. Was anybody's partner perfect at one point in there? An example they want to give? Well, because I was perfect the whole time. I just assumed. <laughs> but you see how the techniques that we are giving you here, can, do you see how they can be applied to interviews? very important to, to bring that into it. So, interview. Oh. And then just one last point. We, we are out of time. We don't want to keep you from getting back to your internship uh, on time. But I do want to make sure that we address very briefly what your exit strategy is. Bottom line, have one. Have an exit strategy. Go into the interview thinking, this is how I'm going to end the interview. That's very important. You need to have an exit strategy so that it makes you look like you were prepared. That's going to leave a lasting impression whether you thought the interview went well or not. Let's be honest, we've all had an interview where even during the interview you thought, oh God, this is not going well. <laughs> That's okay. That's part of the game. But you still need to project confidence because just because you don't think it's going well doesn't mean the interviewer doesn't think it's not going, or thinks it's not going well. You never know when you're making the right impression even if you don't think you are. So rehearse that exit strategy. Go into the interview with a game plan. This is how I'm going to leave this interview. I'm going to leave you confident that I am the right person for this position. Even if you stumble over yourself along the way. It's okay. It's all part of the interview. You want to wrap up? All right. So I hope that you guys have had the opportunity to, to take some of these, th these things and we'll get to integrate it into your next interview. Identify the things beforehand that are within your circle of control. What are the things that are your concerns that you can do the research to get to control that? And controlling those nerves and walking into the interview with calm and breathing, it, it helps to, to, cre to create the, the impression that you want to give as an interviewer. Breathe, listen, develop relationships. That's what the interview is all about. Breathe, listen, develop relationships. And by doing the yes and, and by doing these few simple things, you are giving the best picture of yourself. And that, it, it, while you're not an improvisational performer at this point, quite yet, those techniques, hopefully you'll have an opportunity to integrate those into your interview strategy in the future. Thank you guys.